Last video, we walked through setting up the Nix package manager to kind of uh, set up these cross-platform packages that we can install depending on what operating system we're working on. And in this video, we're gonna walk through setting up ZSH as your default shell. We're gonna do some configuration, install a few plugins that I find to be pretty valuable. We're working on a few goals here. So if this is the first video you're watching in this series uh, and you're curious on how to set up a portable development environment, I highly suggest going back and watching the first video. It'll really help make uh, the things that are, we're doing in this video make more sense. We're setting up a portable development environment. We're using a cross-platform package manager to do so, and we're working with these tools here. Now, the one tool that this video is about is ZSH. ZSH is a uh, shell alternative to Bash, which is the default shell that comes, uh, you know, at least in Ubuntu here, if I run echo shell, I'm running bin bash, right? But I do have ZSH installed. We installed it in the previous video using Nix. Now, what I want to happen is uh, I want to log in anytime I initialize a new terminal. I want to use ZSH. I don't want to use bash. The first step is to actually tell your terminal that ZSH uh, is allowed to be used as a login shell. In order to know which shells are valid login shells, you actually have a special file called etc shells. And if I cat it, actually let's let's bat it since we installed bat. This is the file, right? And it's uh, got a comment at the top. It says these are all the valid login shells that I'm able to be used. Uh, that I'm that I'm able to use uh, and right here you can see bin bash which is the default so what we want to do is add ZSH to this list and then after it's in the list we can do one more command to actually tell our terminal hey use it uh, so in order to do that we need to kind of write this to command uh, one liner here we're going to first write command dash V ZSH and when you do that, it just kind of points to the ZSH executable. And if you pipe the result, which would be the path to the executable, into the next command, which we have to run in sudo, and the command is called t, essentially what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I have this uh, executable that's at the following path, and I want to append it to this etc shells file. So if I do that, it's going to ask for my password and boom. So now if I run bat etc shells, you can see at the bottom we have a new entry and that entry is pointing to our ZSH executable that we installed with Nix. Let's go back to our install.sh file. Again, if you haven't seen the first video, one of the goals of this entire series is to write an entire install script, a single install script that can boot up this development environment um, whenever we want it. We have inside of our home directory an install.sh file. And if we open that up in Vim, we have a number of things we're doing here, right? We're installing Nix, we're sourcing it, and then we're installing a bunch of packages. You can see we have bat down here. We've been using bat a little bit. We have ZSH, which we're working with now. Uh, we have antibody with which is a zsh plugin manager uh, but what we want to do is add zsh to valid login shells right and all we have to do is duplicate the command that we just read uh, that we just ran cool uh, now that this command is done we have to take the final step which is to actually make zsh uh, or use zsh as your default shell Let's just say default shell, right? Now we need to save this and figure out how to do that. Uh, and the way to do that is actually to use this, uh, and again, we have to do this in sudo, uh, change shell command. And we're going to pass which ZSH, uh, and we're gonna say, let's do this for the current user. So before I run that command, let's just see who the current user is. Oh, I should echo that. So the current user is me, right? I'm in my, you know, my present, the present working directory is my home directory. And the other variable that we are using this, which ZSH, essentially 
running which ZSH will point to the terminal's current instance of the ZSH executable and wrapping it inside of these parentheses kind of uh, symbolizes like, hey, uh, the output of the command inside the parentheses, I want to use that as like a, a, an argument or a variable in my command. So if I run sudo chsh-s, -S, which ZSH for the user, I'm essentially saying, hey, for this user, change the default shell to which uh, to the uh, ZSH that we have installed. So if I run that, um, nothing really happens, right? Uh, because the next time you initialize a terminal session, you will uh, see ZSH running. So if I echo my shell here, I should still be in bash, that's fine. But if I create a new tab in Windows Terminal, boom, we have ZSH, right? This is the ZSH shell configuration for new users. The reason I'm getting this prompt is because I actually have no ZSH configuration file in my home directory. Um, and it gives you three options uh, to take from this point. You can either quit and do nothing, or you can exit, and when you exit, the shell will create a new ZSHRC file. So I want to do that. I'm going to type in the letter zero. And now I have, you know, a pretty ugly terminal prompt here. Um, but we're still in our present working directory. And if I echo the shell, I am using that ZSH executable that we installed with Nix. Uh, and now anytime I open a terminal, you know, I'm still in still in ZSH, right? I can do this all day long and we're good to go. So I'm going to close out all of these other windows here. Let me clear this and let me also list out my home directory. You can see that uh, the Z shell has created this kind of default ZSHRC file. And if I go inside of there, there's nothing there, right? There's just a single comment. We can delete that comment, whatever. Okay, let's go back into our install.sh file and we can add that sudo chsh command to the bottom of the file, All right? Uh, we can save that. And now as a quick summary, we're installing Nix, we're sourcing it, we're installing all our packages, right? And then we're adding ZSH, which was one of the packages we installed. We're adding that as a valid login shell. And then we're going to use it as the default shell. And this will all run sequentially uh, anytime you run this install.sh file. When we sourced the Nix package manager, we did that in Bash. We didn't do it in ZSH. Uh, and the result of this action, it does a few things, but one of the things it does is it kind of appends this one liner, this one line conditional into a file. And the file it chose uh, was this dot profile. So if I go into dot profile, you can see at the bottom here, I have this kind of conditional statement that says, hey, if this file exists, and I think that means if it's executable, then uh, source it, right? This works inside of bash but we're not in bash anymore and to kind of uh, show you what i mean if i try to use the nix env command to install a package zsh will say hey i can't i don't know that command i've never heard of it uh, so what we want to do is go into this dot profile i'm going to cut the entire thing i'm going to save the file and then i'm going to go into zshrc and i'm going to paste it and we can save that now if i try to use nix env again i'm still going to get command not found. And that's because you have to, anytime you change the ZSHRC file, you have to source it, right? So I'm going to say source. Now you don't have to source it. You can essentially open up a new terminal session, uh, but I don't want to do that. So I'll just source ZSHRC. And then if I run Nix env, boom, I'm going to get an error, but that's fine because at least we know that we have access to it. Now, a lot of people uh, who use ZSH, they use something called Oh My ZSH, which is a very popular ZSH framework. Yeah, I guess they, they call it a ZSH framework, right? Uh, and the first time I used ZSH, I kind of adopted Oh My ZSH because it's recommended by everybody. I came across 
a, another solution called Antibody. Antibody is a shell plugin manager made from the ground up thinking about performance. If you check out our install script, you can see up here that after we installed ZSH, we also installed Antibody. Antibody is actually kind of cool. It gives you access to all the plugins that you would have access to inside of oh my zsh but it doesn't just dump a bunch of defaults on you you can kind of pick and choose one of the cooler optimizations that antibody provides is it gives you a faster way of loading your plugins when you start your shell um, inside of its documentation it kind of outlines you know two ways that you can install plugins static and dynamic static being the faster of the two and the way that the static uh, loading works is you keep all of your plugin definitions or your plugin declarations in this uh, zsh plugins.txt file and anytime you make a change to the text file you can bundle the plugins defined therein and create that uh, in and take that text file and generate a new plugins.sh file inside of your zshrc at some point you have to source the .sh file but you don't have to build the plugins every single time you open your terminal if nothing has changed. So this is sort of a, a, an interesting optimization and we can execute it in a few ways. We're gonna create a .zsh plugins.txt file. And inside of this file, uh, if you go to the documentation, you can see how you describe plugins in, uh, within Antibody. So I have a list of ZSH plugins that I am going to use and populate my text file. These are all kind of relative pointers to a GitHub repository that houses the specific plugin. I'm gonna save that. If I ls my home directory, you can see that it does exist. If I bat that, you can see the contents, right? And now we have to sort of bundle all of these plugins into a .sh file. So if you go back to antibody's documentation in the static loading session, uh, section, it will run a command that pipes the uh, .txt file and bundles all of the plugins you've defined into a new file called zsh plugins.sh. So if I copy this and I paste it, I'm gonna use the antibody command. Remember if I, um, let me delete this real quick. If I say which antibody, it's pointing to that, uh, that antibody uh, package that we installed with Nix, right? In the first video. So if I run antibody bundle and I'm bundling my text file and I am appending the result into this new file that doesn't exist. Now, if I list my home directory, not only do I have this zsh uh, plugins.txt file, but I have this new ZSH plugins.sh file. I'm gonna open ZSHRC, source ZSH plugins, or we just say source plugins, right? And all we have to do is write source, uh, we'll say home directory ZSH plugins.sh. If I source my ZSHRC file now, ZSHRC will be processed, those plugins will be uh, processed, and you'll notice a bunch of stuff is going to happen. So I'll run zshrc. It's first installing nvm, which is the first plugin we've kind of uh, defined. And then it kind of puts me into this power level 10k prompt, which is a, uh, a terminal prompt that we're going to use. So I'll just quickly go through this. After sourcing the zsh plugins, you know, a few things were installed. You had NVM, which is the uh, node version manager, which we can use to install node and, and NPM, different versions of it. The power level 10K, which is a command prompt. You can see here that we have a completely new command prompt. And when we do all these things, some of the tools that we installed mutate the ZSHRC file. You know, for instance, power level 10K has added some stuff to the top of the file and to the bottom. Uh, we're still using Nix here. We're sourcing our plugins here. This is start. This file is starting to get built out, and we can clean it up as we go further. Uh, but the good news is that we have this uh, zsh plugins.txt file, 
and we bundled all of the declared plugins into a .sh file that was then sourced into our .zshrc file. Now that was a very manual process, but I want you to kind of envision how this would look in an automated world in our install.sh file. Uh, we will most likely have this text file committed to source using git and we can store that along with the rest of our dot files and our install script uh, and when we clone that directory down in the future let's just say you know in the next two years you decide to get a new laptop or a new computer you have this uh, all of these plugins defined and they're stored next to your dot files they're stored next to your install script and they live on github you go to github you clone the, the repository and you say, okay, I need to run my install script. Well, install needs to, to bundle these plugins. So let's go ahead and open that script. Uh, you know, we're installing our package manager. We're sourcing our package manager. We're installing all of these packages, including antibody. So theoretically, after this runs, we will have access to the antibody bundle uh, file. So if I go down here and I say bundle uh, ZSH plugins, and all we need to do is run that one command right here, right? Antibody bundle dot ZSH plugins dot text into ZSH plugins dot SH. Now the only gotcha here is that this text file has to exist. Uh, and it will exist in a, in a future video. We're going to work on setting up our dot file so that it does exist and that it's in the right place at the right time so that this uninstall script works. But essentially now we have a pretty, uh, a pretty good, a pretty healthy automated setup where we're installing a package manager, installing a bunch of plugins. Um, we're, we're changing our shell. We're using plugins for that shell. So we got a lot of interesting things going on. Now, before we wrap up this video, I did want to kind of flesh out this ZSH configuration a little bit more. Uh, again, most of this configuration is going to be unique to me, but um, if you you know want to see how I'm doing certain things, uh, it might be helpful. So we installed a bunch of plugins here, and we're already seeing a few of them, right? We have our Power Level 10K prompt. We've installed NVM, uh, which is Node Version Manager. Now, some of these plugins, well, one in particular, NVM, it requires us to kind of export this NVM dir directory, which helps the tool. Um, you know, this is in the documentation. We can go ahead and move this up here so that we're sourcing our ZSH plugins when we need to. If you have aliases, you know, uh, maybe you have a dot aliases file, you can definitely, you know, source your uh, dot aliases here, or you could just straight up you know, I tend to just define my aliases here. So, you know, instead of writing ls all the time, I like doing lsal, right? Um, so if I source my zshrc and I just write ls, now I'm getting that lsal instead, right? Um, if I wanted to access that unaliased ls, I can just do this guy and there you go. So back in our ZSHRC, you know, I'm kind of referencing my current dot files. I have a ton of aliases, but for the most part, what we have here is a, a really good start. If you're interested in like a, a deeper ZSH tutorial, maybe you want to learn a little bit more about how to configure it, um, maybe some interesting plugins that you could check out. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to, to create a, a deeper video, but at this point, you know, we have ZSH working as our default shell. We have a basic configuration. We have a nice little command prompt. Um, you know, I kind of brushed over power level 10K, but man, power level 10K is really neat. Um, you can make, you know, 21,000 stars on GitHub. You can do a lot of interesting stuff with this. Uh, you know, here's just a few of the different um, uh, you know, a few of the different styles that you can get. And it just, you know, it works really well. It's very fast. Um, again, you know, using antibody for our plugin manager. Uh, so we've done pretty good for ourselves. 
uh, we've got ZSH set up, we've got Nix working. In the next video, we're going to start configuring Vim, specifically with NeoVim, uh, to, to start being able to edit text in a, in a nicer way. So uh, if you're looking forward to that, stay tuned for that video. And again, hope you learned something and uh, we'll see you on the next one.